Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to simplify trigonometric functions when we have rational trigonometric expressions, uh, functions, expressions. Um, so basically, when we're dealing with you know, rational, or another way just to nice to say fractions, uh, the best thing we want to do is eliminate the fractions. And to do that, um, what we have here is we have two rational expressions, and we're, we have either add or subtract. So basically, what we're going to want to do is Combine them now. Just like combining any other fractions, you know, if I was going to say, you know, um, two thirds plus one four, um, one third. Well, to add fractions, as long as they have the same denominator, we add the numerators and keep the denominator same. That becomes three thirds, which is equal to one. However, if I had one third plus one fourth, now comes a little bit different story because now we have different denominators. So what we have to do is determine what the least common denominator is of 3 and 4, meaning the smallest multiple that both 3 and 4 evenly divide into, which in this case would be 12. So then what we need to do is apply multipliers um, to get them to be the same, same denominator. So I'd have 4 over 12 plus 3 over 12. By multiplying by 4 over 4 and 3 over 3, I have produced equivalent fractions. So I'm not changing the problem. I'm just rewriting it so now the denominators are the same. Now I can add the numerators, and I'll keep the denominators the same. So this is just the basic fraction operations that we're going to apply now with trigonometric expressions. OK, so let's go ahead and look at our first problem. So in our first problem, you can see that we have um, cosecant of t and secant of t are denominators. So to get them to be, to combine them, to add them, we have to have the same denominator. Well, we need to look at our common denominator. Now, when 3 and 4 was kind of obvious, that's 12, right? They both divide into it. Um, but what, what both divides into cosecant of t and secant of t? Well, in this case, um, there's not a trigonometric function that we know, oh, they divide both into this one. But what we can do is write, make sure that they both divide into the product. So therefore, I can rewrite the LCD. In this case, it's going to be actually the product of our two functions, cosecant of t and secant of t. They both evenly divide into that product. So to get our common denominator, I'm going to multiply by secant of t over secant of t and um, cosecant of t over cosecant of t. Now, if you remember in our previous videos, one of the best things to do when we're starting to simplify, um, especially when things start getting a little bit difficult, is always convert things to sines and cosines. And I can already see that you know, secant times sine, that's not going to give me anything um, you know, initially just by itself. So, but if I rewrite it in terms of sines and cosines, I can actually start to see something. So when we go ahead and do that, what we'll have here is I have 1 over cosine of t times sine of t, I'll rewrite that over 1, plus cosine of t over 1 times 1 cosecant is 1 over sine of t. And that's all going to be divided by um, 1 over cosine of t times 1 over sine of t. And that's going to be our common denominator, actually. So I should just write that right there. 1 over cosine of t um, times 1 over sine of t. OK, so what we notice here is when I do this, I have sine over cosine plus cosine over sine. Unfortunately, I still cannot um, combine those, right? So if I go ahead and simplify that, so this can both by cross to give me sine of t over cosine of t. And this can be rewritten as cosine of t over sine of t. Okay, so you might say, well, by doing this, you kind of made everything a little bit more complicated. And at this point, yes, you're kind of correct. But I still want to be able to see, well, I still want to combine these, right? I got to still add them up. So again, I'm going to use common denominators. So the common denominator between cosine and cosine of t and sine of t is going to be cosine of t times sine of t. So this, my LCD, is cosine of t times sine of t. So therefore, I'll multiply by cosine of t. Oh, oops, I'm sorry. I'll multiply by sine of t over sine of t over here, and cosine of t over cosine of t. So by doing this, what we end up getting is sine of t times sine of t is sine squared of t over sine squared of t plus cosine squared of t 
that's all divided by sine of t cosine of t, which is the common denominator. And that's still divided by 1 over cosine of t times 1 over sine of t. OK. Now, what has this provided us? Well, thankfully, now this has provided us an opportunity to use our Pythagorean identities. We know that sine squared of t plus cosine of t, that is going to add to 1. So I am now just going to replace that with 1. By using my Pythagorean identities, I know that's going to be 1. Now, basically, I have a fraction in my numerator and a fraction in my denominator. So if you remember how to get rid of fractions in your denominator, you just multiply by the reciprocal. So the reciprocal, this is really all over 1. So to multiply by reciprocal, I'm going to multiply by cosine of t sine of t over 1 times cosine of t sine of t over 1. Therefore, by multiplying these, these now to multiply to your, um, go to 1. And here, your sine and cosine divide into 1, leaving us with a final simplified, answer, simplified expression of just 1. Beautiful. Um, so for the next example here, we have tangent of theta plus cosine of theta plus 1 plus sine of theta. Now in this example, um, we need to be adding our fractions. Well, tangent of theta isn't written as a fraction, so let's rewrite it in terms of sine and cosine. So what I'll do is I'll rewrite tangent of theta as sine of theta over cosine of theta. Now you can see that my two denominators are cosine of theta and 1 plus sine of theta. Therefore, the LCD of this problem is again going to be their product, which is cosine of theta times 1 plus sine of theta. And basically, guys, when you, th when you think about this, when you're dealing with your trigonometric functions, it's basically going to be the product of your two denominators. That doesn't always work with numbers, but for our trigonometric functions, it's basically um, more than likely going to be the case, unless we have something, um, I don't have an example of one where it's not going to be uh, that. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. OK, so now we look at this. So now we need to get to our common denominators. So I'll multiply by 1 plus sine of theta over 1 plus sine of theta. And then over here, I'm going to multiply by cosine of theta over cosine of theta. So um, by doing that, and what I'll also do is I'll apply distributive property here. So by doing that, I now obtain sine of theta plus sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta. And that's going to be all over 1 plus sine of theta times cosine of theta. Well, again, we look at this and we see that we have sine squared plus cosine squared. That's going to, again, um, using our Pythagorean theorem, equal to 1. Well, now you can see that sine of theta plus 1 is the same thing as 1 plus sine of theta. There's, there's for those will divide out. We still have a 1 up top. So therefore, my final simplified answer would be 1 over cosine of theta. Or we can rewrite that as secant of theta. Um, all right, so into the next example here. Uh, now we have, again, we have two denominators. So it's pretty obvious. Now we just need to identify the common denominator. Um, so our common denominator in this example is going to be 1 minus sine of x times cosine of x. Again, just going to be the product. They, they can only divide into their product. Um, one example, if this was like cosine of x and this was cosine squared of x, then you wouldn't have to multiply them to give you cosine cubed. You could just use cosine squared of x because they both divide into cosine squared. But in this case, we have sine and cosine, so we need to use the product. So therefore, over here, I'm going to multiply by 1 minus sine of x on the top and bottom. Over here, I'm going to multiply by cosine of x on the top and bottom. OK, so when I go ahead and multiply this out, cosine of x times cosine of x is going to be cosine squared of x. Plus, here I'm going to use um, distributive. I'm going to use distributive property or FOIL. So I'm actually going to multiply these out. So you're going to do one times one, which is one. One minus sine of sine uh, si negative sine of x, and then one minus negative sine of x again was going to give you a negative two sine of x. And the negative sine of x times negative sine of x is going to be a positive sine squared of x. Um, again, basically what I did was I applied FOIL. I did one times one. 1 times negative sine. Negative sine times 1, and negative sine times negative sine of x. I didn't want to spend too much time on this, because that is kind of a review. You're just applying FOIL. When you apply FOIL, the middle two terms combine to give you negative 2 sine of x. And that's going to be all over cosine of x times 1 minus sine of x. 
OK, well, again, what we notice here is my cosine squared of x plus my sine squared of x is going to give me 1. Then I can take that 1 and add it to this one. So that's going to leave me with 2 minus 2 sine of x divided by cosine of x times 1 minus sine of x. Well, to further simplify this, you can see that 2 minus 2 sine of x, I can actually factor out a 2. So when I factor out a 2, I'm left with 1 minus sine of x divided by cosine of x times 1 minus sine of x. Then you can see that my 1 minus sines of x, those are going to divide out. And I'm left with 2 over cosine of x, which you can rewrite as 2 times secant of x. Whew. All right, last example. So now what we have is 1 minus sine squared divided by 1 plus cosine of x. Now, in this case, um, it's, you know, we have 1. Well, the main important thing is we want to rewrite 1 as 1 over 1. So now, basically, the common denominator of 1 and 1 plus 1 cosine of x is going to be 1 plus cosine of x. So all I simply need to do in this case is go ahead and multiply by 1 plus cosine of x. All right, so when doing that, I get 1 plus cosine of x and then minus sine squared of, that should be an x, of x, divided by 1 plus cosine of x. Now, dividing those back out is not really going to make sure, but make sure that 1 plus cosine of x divides into that as well as divides into that. So we have a little issue here because in this case, I have, wh what else am I going to do from here? Um, well, I notice that I have a sine squared. And remember, by using your Pythagorean identities, I can rewrite sine squared in terms of cosine. So what I'm basically going to do is rewrite sine squared as, um, let's see, it's sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. So if I'm going to rewrite sine squared, that's going to be 1 minus cosine squared of x. Well, now, when I distribute this negative 1 here, what I now obtain is going to be negative 1 and then positive cosine of x. So 1 minus 1 is going to give me 0. So therefore, I'll be left with cosine of x plus cosine squared of x all divided by 1 plus cosine of x. So now, just like how we factored out the 2, here I can see a cosine of x um, is common of cosine of x and cosine squared of x. So when I factor that out, I'm left with, when I factor out a cosine of x, I'm left with 1 plus cosine of x divided by 1 plus cosine of x. And now you can see that the 1 plus cosine of x are going to divide to 1 and leaving us with our final simplified expression of cosine of x. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you simplify um, a rational trigonometric expression by using rational trigonometric expression operations. Thanks.